Hey there! Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. The T-Biz Podcast delivers tea news that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Think of us as a digital caravan of storytellers bringing authentic, authoritative, exotic, and exclusive stories to you weekly from the tea lands. Each week, the Tea Biz podcast summarizes news with the greatest impact on the tea industry. But tea requires far more nuanced coverage than the recitation of production volumes and commodity prices. That is why the Tea Biz podcast is paired with the more inclusive Tea Biz blog and Tea Journey magazine. The podcast offers a weekly mix of news and features. It is innovative and interactive permitting listeners to conveniently contact reporters at Origin to ask questions that are answered via text messages that are delivered privately to their phone. Welcome, and here are the headlines. Sri Lanka launches expansive Ceylon tea promotion. A green tea compound acts like a superhero sidekick to cancer cell suppressor. Unilever is likely to initiate a Lipton IPO in 2021, and tea tourism stirs from a deep slumber during the pandemic. More in a minute, but first, this important message. Up in the towering Himalayas, Kumau is one of India's lost tea regions. Today, we raise our cups in the name of Avani. Kumau nonprofit dedicated to strengthening farming communities. Cheers to a brighter future for all. Sri Lanka's Tea Board last week authorized the most expensive promotion in the history of Ceylon tea. Financed by a tax on tea exports, the global promotion targets 12 markets in Asia, Europe, and North America. The campaign is financed by a promotions and marketing tax first imposed in 2010. Combined, these taxes are the highest levied by a major tea-producing country. Collection was suspended in June 2020 at the request of the Tea Exporters Association after members complained the added expense reduced competitiveness. Sri Lanka's Minister of Plantation Industry said the $23 million investment is necessary to sustain and grow Sinlong's tea market share. Quote, We need to be more aggressive in our approach in attracting new customer segments, he said, adding, The campaign will reignite interest in the Ceylon tea brand and strengthen its premium position in the global market. End quote. Biz Insight Dintzu Grant in Colombo will oversee media planning, scheduling, and buying. The Grant Group, founded in 1958, was Sri Lanka's first internationally recognized advertising agency. Founder Reggie Kandapa is considered the founding father of the island's nation's creative agencies. The company was acquired in 2017 and is now part of the Dentsu Aegis Group a consultancy with 355 offices in 143 countries that employs 58,000 workers. EGCG, which is epigallocatechongalate, the major antioxidant in green tea, was found by researchers to increase levels of P53, an important DNA-repairing protein and tumor suppressor. Cancer specialists refer to P53 as the guardian of the genome in cells under attack. EGCG acts to stabilize the cancer fighter like a superhero sidekick. Quote, 
The direct interaction between the two points to a new path of developing anti-cancer drugs, end quote, writes Professor Chun-Yu Wang, a Ph.D. and doctor at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York. His team's findings were published last week in the journal Nature Communications. Biz Insight Green tea compounds are known to inhibit the growth and even kill tumor cells that cause breast, lung, bladder, prostate, and colon cancers. This has been demonstrated in laboratory, animal studies, and a 10-year clinical trial when tea is consumed in quantities of at least 3 cups per day and up to 10 cups per day. A cup of tea contains two to 300 milligrams of EGCG, roughly 50 to 80 percent of the catechins present in green tea. Previously bifurcated Unilever has now completed its consolidation as a single stock headquartered in London. Bloomberg News reports that separating the weaker performing division it intends to sell is underway. CEO Alan Job said it is highly likely these will be structured as IPOs. Lipton, PG Tips, Pazzo, Puka Herbs, and smaller tea brands are likely to be split off as a separate company. In the process, a hedge fund or private equity firm may acquire these brands collectively valued at $3 billion. The disassembly is designed to discover the true value of these properties, the sale of which will be the most lucrative in tea history. Business Insight The consolidation into a single business entity, which cost Unilever $1.2 billion, improved the company's ability to participate in mergers and acquisitions in a category that rewards global scale. Hospitality venture Taj announced it will open in December a new tourist resort near Makabari Tea Estate in Darjeeling. The Taj Chia Kutir is a 22-acre luxury property in Kursiung, one of five upcoming projects by the Ambuja Neotia Group. A similar property will open in Sikkim in 2022. The chief minister of West Bengal announced this week loans of up to 100 million rupees, about 1.4 million U.S. dollars, to stimulate the tourism sector, which has declined precipitously due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The state will pay half the interest on the loan during the first year of operation. Quote, this will largely benefit the homestays and guest houses. The government's thrust is on development of rural tourism and smaller places, says Siddish Padar, president of the Hotel and Restaurant Association of Eastern India. He told the Economic Times, quote, we are very happy that the state government has looked up to tourism, end quote. Biz Insight. Leisure destinations are recovering more quickly than business conference locations in cities like Kolkata. According to V.S. Davidi, director of Vistar Properties, many Taj units at leisure destinations have already gained over 70% of their 2019 business back. Interest level for Taj Chia Kurta is high, he said. And now for a word from our sponsor. Q Trade Teas works with tea purveyors at every scale, from promising startups to the world's largest multinational beverage brands in the hot, iced, and bottled tea segments. With U.S. based formulation, blending, and packaging services, Q Trade can help you innovate, scale up, and grow your specialty tea brand. For more information, visit our website, QTradeTeas.com. This week, we report on Tea Cattle, a Canadian retail chain launched at the height of the pandemic that features ethically sourced vegan organic loose leaf teas. And we travel to Sri Lanka for a look at an impressive digital marketing initiative created by seven small enterprise entrepreneurs promoting Ceylon tea. In tough times, and this is certainly one of them, opportunities present themselves, writes 36-year-old tea kettle founder Doug Putman, 
a turnaround investor who has opened 45 tea retail locations in nine Canadian provinces and six U.S. states. He plans to expand to 100 stores in 2021. Tea Biz takes you to Coquitlam, British Columbia for a walk through one of the newest small locations. Canadian company Tea Kettle expanded overnight in October to become one of the largest tea chains in North America. Taking over more than 45 shuttered David's Tea locations, Tea Kettle stripped away David's sunshiny turquoise and summer popsicle colors and replaced them with sleek dark blue and a retro vintage Great Britain feel. I'm Jessica Natalie Woolard, based in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. I'm going to take you on a tour of the Tea Kettle experience from a visit to the location in Coquitlam, British Columbia, a city east of Vancouver. The Coquitlam location is in the Coquitlam Centre shopping mall. Here's what you'll see upon approaching the store. The storefront is wide open, with the archway painted in the brand's dark blue, evoking stability and tradition. A pillar and accent wall in that same blue are visible too. Walking in, you'll see built-in shelves on the right-hand side. They hold tea wares, but stock was extremely low. The salesperson explained there have been shipment delays due to COVID-19. The shelving appears to be former David's Tea units, but with tea kettle branding in the promotional spaces on the tops. To the left is the main counter, and behind it, you'll find that classic wall of tea, a signature feature of most tea shops. It looks striking, as it always does to me. So much potential in every tin. Something for peacefulness, energy, serenity, stress relief, or a delicious treat. The tins are matte black and displayed in three long rows. The salesperson said the black tins will soon be switched out for dark blue to match the tea kettle brand. Colored labels adorn the front of the tins, color-coded by tea type. Red for rooibos, blue for oolong, green for green, and so on. Each tin has a metallic band of color matching the tea type just under the lid. The band catches the light and shines. The store's lighting is very white and crisp. That warm, sunshiny feel of David's tea has been replaced with what I interpret as sophistication meets hipster, or hipster chic. I think that feeling could come to life through the kinds of teawares they'll be selling. The lack of product and bare shelves sort of interrupted that potential. I think that hipster chic feeling is best captured in Tea Kettle's main graphic, the one it's using in its branding online and throughout the store. It's an illustration reminiscent of vintage Great Britain. Picture this. The profile of a mustachioed man in a morning suit and top hat, wearing a monocle. Think Sherlock Holmes, but instead of the figure holding the Victorian-style pipe you might expect, he's holding, what else? A steaming cup of tea. The retro feel of that monochrome graphic illustration is matched by the aesthetic of vintage board game editions showcased on a tower display in the middle of the store near the entrance. The games include Clue, Candyland, Boggle, Shoots and Ladders, and Mystery Date. Packaged in vintage style, they look like antique books. The look and feel of those games complement the Tea Kettle brand experience, not only aesthetically, but also as a nod to that old worldy feel. The idea that you can slow down with a cup of tea sipped while playing a retro board game. The teas themselves are all blended in Toronto, Ontario. The lovely staff member will bring out the canisters and let you smell the teas as long as you keep your mask on and follow COVID protocols. Similar to David's Tea's style of blends, Tea Kettles features quirky ingredients. The movie night blend, for example, contains bits of popcorn and smells just like popcorn. Birthday party contains candied confetti in blue, green, yellow, and orange, and smells just like chocolate cake with vanilla icing. 
Some of the names of the teas are fun and quirky, similar to what David's tea does. They always remind me of OPI nail polish names, where the name brings the color of the polish to life with a story. So, despite the tea naming being a little gimmicky, I'm drawn to them and intrigued by what they promise. Cha Cha Cherry, Mindful Medley, Madame Butterfly, Go Go Goji. But what about the taste, you're probably wondering? We'll save the tea tasting and reviews for another day. Tea Kettle was launched incredibly quickly, and they're still working out some of the kinks, like stock, for example. I think in a few months' time, we'll see a stronger brand performance across the board in terms of the kinds of teawares being sold, graphics, visuals, and packaging, and the in store experience. In an interview with Retail Insider, owner Doug Putman said he anticipates opening a hundred additional stores by April. Until one opens near you, you can start your tea kettle experience through their online store at tea kettle.com. A U.S. survey of chief marketing officers last fall revealed a 74% increase in spending on social media during the pandemic. Investment in social media grew from 13% to 23% of total marketing dollars spent. T marketers increasingly realize that traditional strategies such as advertising and attending trade shows, while important for branding, convert only a few leads into buyers. This is because consumer expectation has evolved over time, making personalization and the customization of marketing strategies essential. This week, Kata, the Salon Artisanal Tea Association, a collaboration of seven tea producers in Sri Lanka, hosted their third garden tour webinar. Webinar participants travel virtually to see the garden, processing facilities, and meet principals, and they can ask questions face to digital face. Simon Bell, Managing Director at Amba Tea Estate, writes that digital marketing is often one of the biggest challenges for small growers and rural entrepreneurs in emerging markets. TBiz asked Bell to discuss the effectiveness of this new approach. Kata has now hosted three online webinars introducing tea producers to buyers globally. Have these webinars been effective in achieving your objectives? How so? Absolutely. Ironically, for many of the association's founding members, finding global buyers has never really been a problem. In Sri Lanka, nearly all tea is made in large factories. So when we started producing teas by hand... The products themselves were so unusual that many of the world's best tea merchants actually tracked us down before we'd even begun any marketing. From day one, we've always had more orders than we can handle. However, with the advent of the global lockdowns, it was apparent that we were going to lose a lot of our sales locally within the Sri Lankan market to visiting tourists to other hotels and restaurants around the island. And it seemed like an ideal time to bring our teas to the attention of a wider audience. And frankly, the response has been far greater than we ever expected. In normal times, if you asked a tea buyer if he'd like to join a a virtual tea tasting where he or she would not even get to taste the tea, I think they would very politely tell you to stop wasting their time and to send them a sample. But with everyone around the world in lockdown, including our own customers, we were amazed that the CEOs, the chief tea buyers of many of the world's most prestigious tea merchants have been joining the webinars and are begging us for more. Perhaps even more important than simply showing off our teas, what's great about the webinar format is the ability to tell the story behind the tea. You know, when it comes to artisanal teas, it's the terroir, the climate, the provenance, the social and environmental impact that are so important to our customers in terms of why they love these teas. And so, you know, during the webinars, we walk around the estate, we show the plucking, the rolling, and the other steps of the process actually happening. And that's what makes the teas so unique. These videos 
show you the land and the people behind the tea. And as such, they convey so much more than static images or text. Collaborating on projects like the webinar series is one example of small growers pooling resources. Explain other ways that banding together benefits buyers. I've spent much of my career advising small businesses all over the world about the virtues of combining their resources, combining their efforts um, through associations and cooperatives and so on, not just in tea, but in other areas of agriculture, in tourism, in manufacturing and so on. Our buyers want variety, but they want that variety in terms of terroir and technique. That doesn't mean that we can't pool our efforts in virtually every other aspect of operations. Joint investments in research and development, in developing new varieties, and planting and testing new varieties, uh, in designing uh, new types of equipment that suit our microscale needs, in commissioning that equipment from engineering companies, which wouldn't be interested if we were just commissioning on our own, uh, from joint purchasing of packaging and certification services and other types of inputs like that that would typically only be affordable to larger enterprises all across the chain, including, you know, making our voice heard with government, uh, we're much better working together than we are separately. And perhaps most importantly, from a buyer's perspective, we offer the opportunity to pool their purchases and their shipments. Two or three of our members are already working together and jointly shipping product to several customers around the world, saving the customers time and money that they otherwise would be spending having to coordinate orders and shipments from multiple suppliers while giving them the variety uh, that their consumers demand. Ultimately, we hope to be able to offer buyers a one-stop shop where they can order a whole menu of different salon artisanal teas representing all the different varieties and all the different growing regions of Sri Lanka. Intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast? Would you like to learn more from our global network of tea biz journalists and tea experts? Contact them direct through subtext, a private message-based platform. Avoid the chaos of social media and start a conversation that matters. Subtext message-based platform lets you privately ask meaningful questions of the tea experts, academics, and tea biz journalists reporting from the tea lands. You see their responses via SMS texts, which are sent direct to your phone. Visit our website and subscribe to Subtext to instantly connect with the most connected people in tea. Remember to visit the T-Biz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week.